Hey everybody, it's time for another episode of the worst cards of all time, where we open cards that generally were awful, and this is a box of 1994 Extra Bases. It was the premier edition, and it was the only edition. This card set was so awful that they never made another release of Extra Bases, and we'll show you why um, in a minute once we open this up. So you can see it's from 1994. There's the side of the set. You can see there's 400 cards in the set. They're UV-coded, and they're 35% larger than other baseball cards. Like, that's a good thing, I guess they thought. And also, there are four insert sets, one insert per pack. And uh, looks like they are foil-stamped. So, um, I guess someone at Fleer thought this would be a good idea. So, we're going to go through and look at these packs, look at these cards see what we pull and you guys can let me know in the comments section what you think of this set or if you had any uh experience buying these cards back in 1994 1994 was kind of the uh pinnacle of my collecting like i would say like 93 94 those were big years for me I used to spend tons and tons of money on baseball cards and this was one set that i literally hated so bad so let's take a look first in the box we have three stacks of 12 packs per stack there's 12 cards per pack so that's a little bit different usually you're used to seeing like four stacks of packs but it looks like it's a candy bar so if you just saw these sitting on a shelf uh at a supermarket or somewhere you would think this is a baseball candy bar but it's not it's actual baseball cards um and i guess they give spacers in there which looks like a uh, reese's cup um packaging thing so let's throw that away and uh we're gonna open these up you can see there's the back of this by Fleer Fleer had a lot of crappy releases um back in the day here we go take a look at these they barely fit on the screen and they're sticking together to boot so we have a Pat Listach Pat Listach sorry Bob Hamelin Mike Moore, uh, Jose Mesa, Orlando Merced, who was uh, one of my favorite players as a kid, Cliff Floyd, Jeremy Hernandez, Roberto Kelly, Chris James, Felix Fermin, former Bucko, John Jaha, and oh, we have an insert card. It's a Steve Carse. Um, you can see it's a rookie standout, Steve Carse, and it barely fits on the screen. So that's our first pack. Let's open up the next one, and then we're going to do a little size comparison. We have a Bob Hamlin. You might remember him. He was one of the top rookies when he first came up. There is a Pedro Martinez. That is Pedro A. Martinez. There was two Pedro Martinez's back then. There was Pedro J. That's the Hall of Famer. And a Pedro A. who didn't really amount to anything. Bobby Bonilla. Reggie Jefferson. Wilson Alvarez. He threw a no-hitter. Bill Wegman. Pete Smith. Lou Whitaker, Matt Williams. Matt Williams had a very, very nice 1994 season. Todd Zeal, and a checklist of all of these cards. At least this is a checklist for the inserts. Um, so you get the last little team set there, and then all the insert sets. Um, not a lot of good rookies in this set from that um, rookie standout list. There's only two notable rookies in the set, I guess. You could call them notable, Chan Ho Park and Ray Durham. Besides that... If you're pulling a good card, it's going to be um, a Hall of Famer, um, one of those stars from this era like Mark Wire, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens. Oh, check this one out. It is a Game Breaker, Tom Glavin from the Braves. That's a nice card. So let's say I pulled this out of a box back in the day, and I'm like, wow, that's an awesome card. I'd like to protect that and get that one maybe signed someday. It's a really sweet card. Tom Glavin is one of my favorite players. Let me throw that in a top letter and keep it safe from being damaged. This is what you get. Oh, it's sticking out like an inch. Try to put it in the top loader. Look at that. So I don't know why they would do this. Um, you would have to buy special top loaders and special penny sleeves if you wanted to keep these um, safe and sound. At least 89 Bowman would come to the top of a top loader, and you could actually still fit them in, like, you know, like an 800-count box, a storage box. But this, like, what are you going to do with this? 
It was an awful idea by Fleer. It doesn't fit in anything. I mean, this would be nice to get autographed, and then, I don't know. I don't know how you would display that, but here's what a regular card looks like. Here's a Clint Frazier, and um, you can see it is that much bigger, 35% bigger than a regular card, and I just don't know what they were thinking. The baseball card hobby was already well-established in 1994. In fact, it was booming, so Fleer came along and decided, oh, let's just... Um, change things up a little bit there's Roberto Alomar and make some gigantic cards and see how that goes well they should have looked back to 1989 when Bowman came on the market and they had their cards just slightly bigger um, than the regular cards and collectors didn't like that so Bowman scrapped that and went back to regular size cards you know the standard baseball card size and players like you know what let's change the game 1994 switch it up a little bit and make some gigantic cards there's a um, James Mooten or Mountain. I don't even know how you say his name. I, I remember him, but I don't remember him that well. Alex Cole, former Pirate. Gary D. Sarcina, John Valentin, Sid Fernandez, Doug Drabick, former Cy Young Award winner for the Buccos. Rick Wilkins, he I think hit 30 home runs in his career in one of, the, uh, one of his standout years. Javi Lopez was great. Joe Carter, one of the best moments of the 90s, that home run to uh, win the World Series off of Mitch the Wild Thing Williams. The next pack. I'd like to find Nolan Ryan or Cal Ripken, one of the good players from this era. Here is a Fred McGriff, um, Game Breakers, with just a little bit of paper loss thanks to the sticking cards. That's one thing about the 90s. Um, I'm always really afraid to buy boxes from the 90s just because the cards were high gloss and a lot of them stick together. You can hear that crunchy, crackling sound. Just another reason why I would rather buy a box of uh, cards from the 80s without the gloss all over the cards than these. Wade Boggs, that's a nice one. Wade Boggs, the Hall of Famer. You can check out the back. I don't think I showed you the backs of these cards yet, but you get a really nice big picture. You get... Um, a bio there. In fact, they could have written a ton about Boggs on this. They've got enough space and they have um, all his, I guess, they don't have all stats there. 89 to 93. They only do the last five years of their career. They should have went the whole way back to 82 when Boggs started. I believe he came up as a rookie in 82 because his rookie card was 83. There's a Roger Clemens in there. Next pack of extra bases. On the top, we have a nice record breaker, David Justice. What record did David Justice break in 1993? Um, I don't feel like reading that. We've got a lot of cards to go through. Sean Dunstan, Mike Perez. I liked his 93 upper deck card where he's holding a picture of himself. He's actually holding his 93 upper deck card in the card, which blew my mind back when I was 12 years old. Tim Wallach. Uh, Omar Vizquel, I think he'll be a Hall of Famer at some point. Just came up short of 3,000 hits, but one of the greatest fielders of all time. Kent Merker from the uh, Braves. Kenny Rogers. Another checklist card. You can see these are organized by team. Uh, and Turner Ward, hitting coach for the Reds. Former hitting coach for the Dodgers. Poor Turner Ward. He just cannot get away from Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig follows him wherever he goes. Oh, we got a Pirates player here. This is a second-year star, Carlos Garcia. Garcia made the All-Star team in 1994 and then um, kind of faded out. Pat Mahomes, you might know his son if you are a football fan. Brian Anderson, Brooks Kieschnick. Brooks Kieschnick could hit and pitch. Jack McDowell, I remember him for walking off the field and flicking off the entire crowd. I guess he had a bad start. He wasn't too happy with the uh, reception he got as he was leaving the field. So he decided to raise his middle finger to the crowd. Um, so I hated Jack McDowell after that. And um, we just had that recently with Ian Kinsler. I don't know if you're watching the Pirate game this weekend on, what was it, Friday night? Thursday or Friday night. Ian Kinsler hit a go-ahead home run off of Francisco Rodriguez. And Ian Kinsler has been awful all year, hitting like one in the like 170s. Just been a real bum all year long for the Padres. So Ian Kinsler hits his big home run, crowd's cheering, and he comes off the field and he raises both middle fingers in the air, looks into the crowd, like all at, at the crowd, and says, blank you all. And I said it a couple times and it was clear 
as day on the replay, if that's what he said. Larry Walker, that's a nice one. You'll have to watch the replay if you're really interested in the Ian Kinsler um, highlight that I'm talking about. But the thing that I was bothered by is he lied afterwards and said he was saying it to his teammates. He's like, oh, yeah, it's just an inside thing. Uh, we just say that to each other. But he was clearly looking at the crowd, and the crowd definitely has been on him because he's been so bad all year. So Ian Kinsler, add him to um, the uh, naughty list, I guess. Santa Claus. All right, as we go through these and peel them apart, there's Jeff Brantley. He's an announcer for the Reds. He's a pretty good announcer, actually, Jeff Brantley. Sometimes I'll listen to him driving back from Cincinnati. He's got kind of like that southern drawl to his um, speaking tone, and uh, he's nice to listen to. Kenny Lofton, speedy guy, Jeff King, former Buccos third baseman, Jeff Becero, Chris Hammond, Rob Dibble, Rob Dibble, I think, once threw a ball for some reason into the crowd at Tiger Stadium into center field and hit some lady in the chest. I felt really bad about it. I vaguely remember that story. I read that years ago. Uh, there's a um, Greg McMichael. You might remember Greg McMichael. Another guy that started off pretty good and then kind of faded out as the 90s went on. Faded into obscurity. Tim Salmon. That's a nice one. He was a hot rookie back in the day in the early 90s. Ray Dorham, extra bases insert card. Ricky Henderson. These wouldn't be bad to get signed. The only thing I could see doing with these cards is getting them signed and then, I don't know, maybe um, using them through the mail, send Chuck Finley his card, be like, hey, Chuck, can you sign this gigantic card? Probably would have to use like a large legal envelope because these things are so big. Harold Baines. I can barely even fit them on the screen. Juan Guzman. He came up and was really, really good also. Brent Gates. Paul O'Neill. Kent Herbeck. And Tim Salmon. So some of you guys might have forgotten about these. Or maybe your card shop owner had a lot of sense and realized that this would be an awful product to put on sale and you wouldn't make any money off of these. So maybe they didn't even carry them. Maybe you didn't even know about these. But they were a thing back in 94. I do remember them. Mark McGuire. It's a nice card. I always like McGuire cards. Love is 85 tops rookie card. That's one of my, um, no, I should make a list of my favorite cards of all time. That would be on the list. Ken Griffey Jr. is a nice one. It's a good picture of Griffey running in there. His cards were always, always in demand throughout the 90s. Griffey went to Cincinnati, and um, after he went to Cincinnati, the injury bug got him. He was never quite the same player, but still, um, Overall, definite Hall of Famer, first ballot Hall of Famer, and uh, always loved watching Griffey play. If he could have stayed healthy his whole career, he might have had a shot at breaking Hank Aaron's record before um, Bonds was able to do so, but with all the injuries that he suffered in Cincinnati, it just uh, was never to be. There's a Cliff Floyd, Dave Justice, again, Dwayne Ward, closer for the Blue Jays, John Burkett, Dave Nelson, he's from Australia. I always found that interesting. Derek Bell. I hated Derek Bell um, back in the day just because uh, the Pirates got him. And uh, when he came over to the Pirates, he decided he didn't want to play anymore. I think he had like a houseboat that he parked out on the uh, Allegheny River. And he called it Operation Shutdown. And he was content just to collect a paycheck and not even try. So everybody in Pittsburgh back in like, I forget what year it was, probably about 20 years ago, hated Derek Bell. Raul Mondesay. There he is, Tony Gwynn. Love Tony Gwynn. Love his 83 rookie cards. Another great player. Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer. Paul Sorrento was pretty good. There's Chris Sabo. Chris Sabo is kind of like a meme in the uh, baseball card community just for those glasses. Fred McGriff should be a Hall of Famer. Dean Palmer. What else we have here? Kevin Seitzer was pretty good. Greg Jeffries. And Archie Cianfraco. Interesting name, but never really um, was that great. A little bit of hype around him as a rookie. I remember collecting him a little bit. There's a Ben McDonald. Speaking of hype, a lot of people thought Ben McDonald would be the next big thing, but never really worked out for Ben McDonald. You might remember his like 1990 Topps draft pick card or possibly the 1990 Upper Deck Ben McDonald, the error card. Uh, Howard Johnson with the Rockies. Always remember Hojo as a member of the Mets. Used to kill the Buccos. Rick White. Scott Sanders. Mel Rojas. 
Jeff Kent, who has the most home runs all time by a second baseman, but is not in the Hall of Fame because he was kind of a, a surly guy, um, not really well liked by his teammates or members of the media. So I think some people, um, at least the Hall of Fame voters, hold that against him. There's Kevin Apier. I always thought he made it such a derpy face whenever he was delivering a pitch, and it seems like all his cars, he's making a weird face on them. So I was never a huge Apier fan because of that. Denny Nagel, former Bucko, Marquise Grissom, Charlie Huff, who looks like he's only about 70 in that picture, knuckleballer, pitched for a long time, there's a Barry Larkin, 1995 MVP, I like Larkin, Dave Fleming, and we got this nice one, a Game Breakers, Ken Griffey Jr., very nice looking card, there's the back of that one in case you're interested, 14 of 30, again, I don't know how you would store these, I guess the best thing to do to store these would get like a 330 count box, and just keep them sideways. I get that's probably the best uh, size box. Just looking at the length of these cards. All right, next up, maybe a 300 count box. You'd have to kind of like check it out. Andy Van Slyke, 1994. Uh, Andy would leave the Buccos shortly thereafter and go to uh, where would he go? The Philadelphia Phillies and then Baltimore Orioles, I do believe. That was a sad day in my life. Andy was my favorite player for a long time. Randy Johnson, the big unit with that long hair, really intimidating. James Baldwin, Hal Morris, Wes Chamberlain, Dante Bichette, his son Bo Bichette should be up, uh, I don't know, it's up, he's injured right now, but we'll be seeing Bo at some point in the future, along with Vladdy Guerrero Jr., some uh, bright spots in the Blue Jays' future plans, there's a Javier Lopez on the back, and um, that's an insert card, obviously, Randy Velarde from the... Yank Scott Erickson, I remember his rookie card, 90 tops traded. People wanted that one a lot. Harold Reynolds, you know him from the MLB Network. Frank Viola, always used to have that mustache going. Lee Smith, Hall of Famer. Steve Finley, Steve Traxel, one of the slowest workers around. John Smoltz, there's a Randy Myers upside down card. A couple of these upside down. Ken Camnetti, who passed away, unfortunately. And Luis Gonzalez. Luis Gonzalez is best known for winning the 2001 World Series with a game-winning hit off of Marion Rivera. It was just a little dinky hit that would have been caught by Derek Jeter if the infield had not been drawn in. Trevor Hoffman, extra bases, insert card. Hoffman, second in saves all time. Have to wonder if anyone's ever going to uh, break Marion Rivera's record for saves. Trevor Hoffman's right behind him. Seems like the, um, the save... Stat and the uh, closers, kind of a, a volatile position nowadays. These young guys coming up, they're all throwing like 100, 105 plus. So, I mean, when players get up into their 30s, mid 30s, they're probably not suited to be a closer anymore unless they've got, like like Hoffman, that amazing changeup. You don't see too many really old closers. There's Fernando Rodney still at it for the Oakland Athletics. I don't know if he's lost that job or not, but... I remember he blew the game against the Pirates about a week or two ago. He's the oldest player in the major leagues. Fernando Rodney, still at it. Always wore his hat sideways, always shooting arrows off into the sky after a save. you got to like that. Um, I know some people don't like Fernando Rodney just because of his style, but he's having fun playing the game, and I think that is important. Players like Goose Gossage probably hate Fernando Rodney. Goose Gossage is old school. I have heard him rip newer players Many times, a lot of players don't like the bat flips and all that stuff, but it gives uh, it gives a little more personality to the game and to the players, and um, I think that's what the game needs. David Segui, remember Segui with the Orioles also. Henry Rodriguez, you might remember from the Expos as well. David Need, I remember him. The Need for Speed, David Need, never really turned out to be that great. The Rockies put a lot of hopes on him. Out of the expansion draft, I believe they picked him up from the Atlanta Braves. You could pluck a player or two off of uh, team rosters that were unprotected. So David Mead was stolen away from the Braves and didn't really uh, work out that mu that well for the uh, Rockies. There's a Mark Grace. It's not a bad card. Rondell White. David Weathers. His son Ryan Weathers will be up in the majors at some point. He's a prospect. Mark Langston. What else we got here? 
Bill Pulsifer, you might remember him. He was part of the big three along with Paul Wilson and Jason Isringhausen, and then none of them really panned out. I guess Isringhausen had the best career as he went on to uh, have a pretty good career as a closer as well. Solomon Torres, and we got a sticking Mark Witten on the back. I'm not even going to bother talking about John Wetland. Next pack. I hope you like the extra bases. Um, I hated these to collect, but I hope you like the uh, discussion we're having about the players. Craig Biggio, Hall of Famer. Billy Hatcher has been reassigned, demoted by the Reds to the minor leagues. Dave Winfield's a Hall of Famer. Here's our insert card. It's a Pedro J. Martinez, second-year star. And he would go on to be a many-year star as he would make the Hall of Fame. Mariano Duncan, Kelly Stinnett, backup catcher for most of his career. Candy Audi with the knuckleballs. Roberto Mejia, Ruben Sierra, and Jimmy Key. My brother used to like Jimmy Key for a little while. All right, next pack. What do we got here in this gigantic extra base pack? I don't remember what these sold for. Um, if you know, let me know in the comments section. If I had to guess, probably around, I don't know, $1.49 a pack or so. Maybe a dollar a pack. I feel like they were kind of marked up a little bit just because of their size. Like, I guess um, Fleer thought that that would be a good thing to make them this big. They could maybe charge a little more money. But it was a real inconvenience to ever have these cards. I don't know how many packs I bought in my lifetime, but I do know that I have a few of these in my collection. And I hate them. Really hate them. I used to keep them like uh, sideways in the other, be the, the cards like this in the uh, storage boxes. And I would have to squeeze these in sideways at the top just to keep them, I guess, safe or whatever. So after buying a pack or two, I was done with this crap. All right. So we got another Ben McDonald there. Daryl Kyle, who passed away in his sleep from an apparent heart attack years ago. That's a very sad story. Steve Bouchelle sticking together with a Mike Kelly. Pat Henkin, he had a few very, very nice years. Uh, Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer. Melito Perez, Chuck Knobloch, Bo Jackson. There's Bo making a kind of strange face there. Kind of like, oh, I just hit a little squibber to the first baseman. Otis Nixon getting down towards the end of this box. Thank goodness. Get this worst card ever series ever with. We got a Juan Gonzalez on the back. Juan Gon, power hitter of the 90s. I like the Game Breakers cards. Those are really nice looking cards. Like I would not mind having a nice bold signature across those. Those would be good for through the mails. That's probably the only good thing about this set. Um, if you look these up in a Beckett, the most expensive card is like $4 from I think the Game Breakers set. But as you know, Beckett prices are really, really kind of outdated and off the mark. You could probably buy the whole set of these for, I don't know, 20 bucks on eBay. I paid $25 for this box because there's not a whole lot of boxes of these left. I don't know if um, people just pitched them and got rid of them because they were so crappy or, or what happened, but not a lot of boxes of these on eBay, so I think I paid around $25 for this box just to bring you this episode of the worst cards ever. For your entertainment, there's Juan Gonzalez. Chris Bossio, Cal Eldred, his um, his son is pitching tomorrow for the Padres. No, no, it's not. I'm thinking of Paul Quantrill's son is pitching for the Padres. Sorry about that. Getting a little bit confused. It's late here where I'm filming at, and there's a Carlos Delgado. Carlos Delgado is one of the uh, one of the top prospects in this time period. He would go on to have a very very nice career, over 400 career home runs. Always thought he deserved. More of a look at the Hall of Fame. There's another Trevor Hoffman. 400 cards in the set. Starting to see a couple repeats. Corey Snyder. Jim Tomey. That's the first time seeing Tomey. Hall of Famer. Always liked Jim Tomey. He's uh, played the game the right way. Never did steroids or was suspected of it. Yvonne Rodriguez, another Hall of Famer. We almost have to like show the card like this to get the whole thing on the screen, which is really stupid. Mike Jackson was a closer for a good many years. And Ray Lankford. How many packs do we have left here? Looks, they literally look like candy bars. Like, if I had a Hershey bar, it would look exactly the same size as this. We have a nice Game Breakers Darren Dalton card. He also, unfortunately, passed away way too early. Cal Ripken Jr. That's a nice-looking card. This is a pretty good pack because right after that is a Greg Maddox, the professor. Greg Maddox has a stat named after him. It's called the Maddox. If you throw a complete game in less than 100 pitches, 
That's called a Maddox because Maddox would often do that. It was very efficient. Jose leaned. My brother uh, might have loved this card back when he was a kid. Jose Lean, Manny Ramirez, and uh, dropping a card there. Mike Oquist, it looks like. A few packs left to go. Got a Pirates card on the back. It is a second-year star, Steve Cook. Well, that was the only year he was a quote-unquote star because Steve Cook was not very good throughout his career. Bip Roberts on the back. We have a Pedro Martinez bunting card. There's the regular card. Hall of Famer Pedro J. Martinez. We used to be printing on a lot of his cards in the early 90s before Pedro A. Martinez kind of like faded out. Tommy Green threw a no-hitter. Ellis Burks and Kurt Manwaring. Next pack. You'll have to let me know if this would have been in your worst sets of all time. If you had to make a top 10, there is a Roger Clemens, Game Breakers. That's a nice one. A lot of you sometimes in these episodes post your least favorite sets of all time. And I don't think any of you have ever said extra bases, believe it or not. I always hated this set, Alex Cole. And to make it even worse, they all stick together, which is so annoying. I could have had this video done in like 20 minutes instead of 30. Um, Doug Drabeck again and Rick Wilkins. I'm trying my best to peel them apart. Not giving much regard to saving the um, cards and to be in mint condition. If there's paper loss, there's paper loss. Jose Canseco. Looks like so far we've only had a few cards with the paper loss, which is good. It's just annoying to uh, peel cards apart. Vince Coleman. See what the insert is in here. It's on the back. That's going to be a second year star, Brent Gates. Brent Gates, um, eh, not a really star-worthy um, career from him. All right, I'm done pulling those apart. These last few packs, I'm just going to see what the insert is just to uh, conclude this video. we got a Ricky Batalico from this pack, not too shabby. Put these aside. This next one. The insert card is a nice game break. Oh, that's a nice one. Don Mattingly game breakers card. Again, I would love to have a nice, that looks sick with a nice silver pen signature across that one. Uh, you could probably even like frame like his rookie cards above that, like an 84 tops here, 84 Don Russ there, signed Don Mattingly. That would look really sweet framed on the back. Um, we're not going to look at the other cards. We've seen enough of these cards to know what they look like. Pirates card there, insert card. It is an Al Martin. He was okay in his career. Not really a superstar or anything like that, but an okay career. Played for the Buccos and um, well, who else? Mariners. And the last pack on this um, worst cards ever, we got a game breaker, Greg Maddox. And I guess I'll go through this last pack for you guys. Again, would love to get that signed. Tim Raines, Hall of Famer. Lenny Dykstra. Brett Saberhagen. Kevin Gross, making a gross face there, and these cards are gross. Armando Reynoso, there is a Troy Neal. Don Mattingly, that's a nice card. A lot of people love Don Mattingly. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Maybe one of these days he'll get in there by the uh, today's game committee. Aaron Seeley. Jeff Bagwell, who is a Hall of Famer, and last but not le least, Joey Cora. So those are all of the cards from 1994 Extra Bases. I hope you liked this video, everybody. Let me know what you thought about these gigantic oversized cards. If you thought Topps Big was bad, or if you thought 89 Bowman was bad, you got to really, really despise 1994 Extra Bases. So... Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Also, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We do lots of different baseball card videos on this channel from old stuff to new stuff. Um, we try to do it all uh, for your entertainment. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great week. And this concludes this episode of The Worst Cards Ever, number seven, 1994 Extra Bases. Up next... Number six on my list, what will it be? You can comment down in the comment section below what you think are the worst six sets of all time that I still have not yet revealed. Thanks, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow.